Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening. It is the Earth Master here on this uh, Tuesday night, December 26, 2023. It's about 11.24 p.m. here at California time. A 1.5 into Northern California appears to be the latest earthquake there on the globe. Did have some further deep activity over here across the region off the coast of Russia earlier this morning. Some deeper activity. We'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, looking at the latest map here in terms of Iceland earthquake activity here in the last 12 hours it reported 12 earthquakes not a big deal not looking at anything uh, being elevated currently at the moment we're still looking at uh, obviously some GPS uh, inflation going on there across the region underneath the Savart Singhi area uh, in fact it looks like there's been a, a pretty decent spike here uh, in the last couple days um, maybe the last day or so notice that little trend mark here going way up so we'll continue to watch that uh, across the area uh, nothing new in terms of any updates there across the Icelandic Met Office so we'll wait for tomorrow uh, and see if they report something but uh, it's been about four days there since they've uh, had anything to say all right latest activity here from the USGS so we've got uh, some interesting earthquake way up here in Russia, 5.3. Very shallow earthquake, but it looks like it's on the side of this uh, uh, mountain range here. Uh, so I'm sure earthquakes do occur out there. Uh, the look at uh, historical data, though, tells us that, uh, well, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of reported earthquakes out there, specifically here in this zone. Uh, it looks like over here, yes, but it uh, looks like this is a kind of an oddball earthquake. Um, and that could have something to do with all the deeper movement we're seeing here recently in this area of the plate boundary could be adding some, uh, uh further strain here across this area. Uh, these intra plate earthquakes do, uh, tend to pop up from time to time, uh, down here across Japan. Looks like the latest one was another deep earthquake here, 273 kilometers uh, into the Northern edge here of the Filipino plate. Uh, still watching this region pretty closely. We have been seeing quite a bit of deeper movement here. Really not, uh, haven't really seen any adjustment as far as surface activity goes. But uh, as you can see on the globe, quite a bit of deep movement going on here across that area. Uh, continued clustering going on from about Taiwan southward into the Indonesia Islands area. Um, still lacking activity here across the uh, roughly about Papua New Guinea eastward along this plate boundary. Not a whole lot showing up here across the uh, region here in the last couple days. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, these don't, uh, they don't really stay quiet for all that, all that long. Uh, we did have a 5.1 in the Papua New Guinea area earlier this morning, and it looks like there's some, uh, a little bit of a shallower earthquake activity along this plate boundary, but further west. Uh, this, this earthquake right here looks like it's a, a 4.1 coming in uh, within the last couple hours or so. But uh, again, keep an eye. Uh, specifically here across this region here, plate boundary looks pretty quiet. Uh, getting some pancake uh, deep activity there across the Kermadec Trench uh, north of New Zealand. Let me run over and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick, see what we have. And still showing about two days ago there for some of that activity. Uh, last couple hours here, looks like a couple twos and some ones and some twos and some ones, maybe a 3.2 there, uh, off the North coast here of uh, North Island. Uh, but aside from that, looks like a typical day, right? We can pretty much, uh, consider those ones and twos very common unless they're in a, uh, you know, like a direct swarm area, but those are, um, pretty common earthquakes there along that plate boundary. Um, really not seeing anything showing up here in terms of interesting activity across the area of, of New Zealand. So, uh, just quiet for now. Pretty quiet. Uh, I did see one little earthquake here in Australia, a 2.5 coming in uh, South, what would they call that? Southern Australia or South Central? I don't know. Not for sure with their uh, terminology in terms of locations, but, uh, got a 2.5 coming in there earlier today. Uh, lacking activity across the uh, roughly about the Sumatra area northward, but this area has filled in here. Um, I think it was like last week or so. Uh, I'm a little bit more concerned about this area right here, uh, not showing any movement, and of course the deeper activity up north here. 
Uh, we've got to watch for some surface adjustment to take place here very soon. That's just a very odd earthquake in that region. Uh, 3.6 coming in. Now well, this looks like it's an older earthquake. Put that up right there. Uh, but we did have some further activity here into the um, Aleutian Trench. 4.5, 57 kilometers deep. A little bit of activity stirring up here across this uh, volcano. I don't think we've seen anything uh, being adjusted there in terms of uh, the status. Uh, let's go check real quick just to make sure. It uh, still looks, well, for the most part, looks like uh, just those couple volcanoes up there along the Aleutian Trench showing uh, uh, the typical statuses. I don't think anything has changed. Um, not really seeing anything on there on the AVO. Uh, the HVO, they put out their daily update on Kilauea Volcano, but nothing's going on yet. Uh, the volcano is currently not erupting. Still seeing some inflation obviously going on. It is at its higher point than any time uh, since the 2018 eruption. So that tells us something there, right? Uh, it's definitely uh, continuing to get elevated. Uh, that means that things are building up below the area. Uh, let's go check out the tilt meter there across the uh, Hawaii area real quick. See if anything has changed since uh, this morning's update. UWE is going to be the station. Looks like we had a little slight drop here um, oh, in the last six hours or so, but it looks like it's coming back up. Uh, this is still an, an obvious trend of inflation. Um, not for sure if we're at that point of where we're going to see a couple days of deflation then rising back up. I don't know, but it's got this little cycle to it and it's been very consistent in terms of uh, a few days of inflation followed by at least two days of deflation and then the following inflation event higher than the previous inflation event. So something's building. Uh, that is for sure. We'll continue to watch that as um, it's getting interesting for sure. All right, let's go back here to the USGS map. Uh, check out the California area. Uh, Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on up there uh, in Northern California. As you can see, not a whole lot either. A little bit of movement around the Reno, Carson City area. And one little earthquake here south of San Francisco uh, on the San Andreas Fault near Pacifica. About 6.5 kilometers deep for a 1.6 major seismically hazardous zone here. Goodness, crazy. Um, San Francisco, right... Uh, you know, it's hard to say if this area is long overdue for a, for a big quake or not. Um, that 1989 earthquake, the Loma Prieta earthquake, I think it was off of the San Andreas Fault. I don't think that was associated, well, I don't think it was on the plate boundary here. Uh, so that would put 1906 here across the northern edge uh, for the latest um, large quake in this area. Uh, but if I remember right, that 1989 earthquake was off on a different fault system here further to the south. I can't remember exactly which one it was on, but, uh, uh, you know, obviously there's some faults here across the Bay Area well overdue. Um, it's just been quiet. It's been kind of quiet for now. Uh, a little swarm out there earlier this morning in the Little Lake area. Aside from that, uh, nothing going on too much up here across the Mammoth lakes and the long valley super volcano area just a couple smaller microquakes one little earthquake in the interesting area i say that because uh, whenever i see movement kick up here across this area on uh, the east side of this plate boundary it gets uh gets a little concerning because that's where some of the strain could um, migrate from the san andreas fault that would mean that this area is under strain currently obviously it is but uh, some further straining going on looks like here within the last hour with a 1.6 just again on the east side of the San Andreas Fault. No major swarming going on, but uh, just keep an eye on that region. Uh, the rest of the states out here, as you can see, one little earthquake, uh, 2.0 near Wrangley. Rangeley or is that Wrangley? Not for sure. If I pronounce it wrong, I apologize. Correct me, please. 2.0, 5 kilometers deeper. Not not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here, but uh, I guess occasionally we do see some. 
pretty interesting features out here on this map. All right, let's back out of here. Uh, see what we got going on up at Yellowstone. I don't think we have too much going on. Uh, the latest overview here looks like uh, a couple smaller spikes of an earthquake here across Norris Junction. It's going to be this area right here. A couple very small earthquakes. Uh, but aside from that, uh, really not seeing anything major showing up there across that region. Very, very small earthquakes. Um, one earthquake way off the coast here of the Rockport area. We've got Boston out here. That's a, that's an odd one, right? 2.3, nine kilometers deep. Goodness. I don't believe that's out there in the hazard zone, but it, uh, it's somewhat out there. Uh, if this were to extend out further into the, into the, uh, Atlantic, uh, it would be in some type of uh, hazardous zone out here. I don't, I haven't really covered too much, uh, earthquake history in terms of what has uh, taken place out here historically. Uh, that'd be an interesting one to cover. Uh, but obviously, it looks like they have seen some larger earthquakes out there in the past, and uh, it is in a seismically active hazardous zone. Uh, the Puerto Rico area, still swarming out here across the area. Uh, this little region here that I've been watching the past few days or so is kind of mellowed out, not seeing too much activity there for now. Um... And again, Hawaii not seeing too much activity. Still getting inflation up here, but uh, um, just typical earthquake activity occurring down there. About 30 kilometers or so underneath the Pahala area. Uh, let's see what else is there, folks. Um, are we missing anything? The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet up here for now. Uh, minimal movement across the Mediterranean, it looks like. But uh, keep an eye. I'm I'm definitely watching this region right here now, with that uh, this earthquake taking place here earlier this evening. Uh, I think there is quite a bit of strain built up here where we're seeing that deeper activity. So pretty much uh, watched a couple regions out here where we're seeing that deeper activity. Uh, keep an eye on that, and of course uh, the lack of movement I would say here across this area of Solomon Islands uh, and the Vanuatu area. They have seen some earthquake activity out here, uh, south here of the Port Vila region, a couple fours and fives, but this area here northward along this plate boundary is not showing anything, and that's a little concerning. Uh, here's all that deeper activity triggering here around Japan. Uh, definitely keep an eye on this region here. A lot of this deep activity up here in the Sea of Osk, Kurokamachaka Trench has not seen any mega quake activity in quite a while. Uh, and just very minimal surface adjustment. So keep an eye on this area. looks like that's getting ready to rock and roll. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Let's check out the space weather activity. I don't think we got anything major going on. Uh, I was just looking at the um, Space Weather Prediction Center. Solar wind prediction. And if we look here, uh, maybe there was a slight CME that was blasted off here of the sun. Uh, somewhat headed to Earth, but it's not going to play a part uh, in terms of any significant uh, space weather event. Might just get a little glancing blow here. It looks like around the 20, uh, when is that? The 27th, 28th or so. Uh, but I'm really not expecting much at all. Um, let me get back here. Solar ham site. Uh, it's the uh, flaring activity has definitely dropped off here. Uh, only very minimal sea flare activity. In fact, we've dropped below the sea flare activity uh, into the B flare class uh, throughout the last, well, it looks like the last 24 hours or so. Uh, so unfortunately, things are going downhill. Uh, coronal hole activity, it looks like. Um, still not really in position here. Got uh, another day or so before this gets into the Earth-directed view. That may play a part, potentially, uh, on some uh, uh, aurora activity. I'm guessing it'll probably be after the first of the year. Um, it's a slow mover, that's for sure. But we'll keep an eye on that, number 86. Uh, looking at the sunspots out here. 
Uh, they are looking very, very, very quiet. Uh, in fact, they've diminished almost entirely since this morning's update. Look at this. <laughs> Goodness, what are we going to do with this? Absolutely nothing. Um, the only region still that may throw off some flares is going to be this area down here, but notice the position out there on the southwestern limb uh, facing away from Earth. So most of it, uh, if something were to blast off, would not be geo-effective. And there's really not a whole lot coming around the bend. There is a, a little new region down here. Let's see if it's gotten named yet. Not uh, doesn't look like it has yet, but it does show a little bit of growth and uh, complexity here with a, a bunch of different core colors here indicating uh, potential. So we'll watch that here in the coming days, see if it wants to amp up or not. Uh, right now, a 95% chance for a C flare, M flare 20. Goodness. X flare 5% chance. I think we're being very generous here. Um, no major expected auroras here on the forecast. And again, we'll wait uh, maybe around the, uh, well, I don't know. It's hard to say. We'll wait here and see if they put out any type of uh, update here on the potential arrival of any CME towards the end of this month, which is getting awfully close. All right, uh, Storm Prediction Center out here. Doesn't look like there's any severe weather threats. Uh, maybe tomorrow some thunderstorm activity out here in Northern California where I'm at. We do have a, um, a nice low pressure system out here. I'm gonna pull up the uh, Western US here. Let's take a look at this. Um, some decent low pressure lines coming in. It looks as though, let's see, that convective band is going to be right here ahead of that low pressure. Uh, so that's where the potential thunderstorm activity could come from. Um, and then that's going to be uh, obviously tomorrow. We do have a little break and then some more rain coming in on Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And maybe another storm system behind that. Uh, so it looks like it will continue to stay wet as we head into uh, the first the beginning of 2024. And we'll see how these patterns change. Um, you know, a lot of times we can get uh, a little hint of what's going on or maybe what will be going on out here across the area. Um, right now, um, when is this? Is this, uh, this is January 8th. Let's go back here to the January 26th time frame. Uh, we have had some high pressure up here into the Canada region. This is the state's lower 48 here. Here's our uh, low pressures out here in the Pacific. That is, um, let me get a different view here. This is kind of a crazy looking view. Just go to North America. There we go. Um, there's our low pressure off the West Coast there. High pressure still parked over the Canada region. That uh, looks like it's going to break down though as we head into the first week of January. That spells uh, a sign there of some colder air coming back down into the lower 48 Canada region here. Uh, and that's probably a good thing, right? Because uh, they've been dealing with some massive high pressure systems up there. So we'll kind of see how this takes place. Um, again, this is almost in the middle of January, looking like maybe a high pressure building off here off the West Coast. That's not good. Uh, and then some further high pressure way up north uh, into the uh, way up there off the coast here of Canada. Uh, so we'll kind of see how this plays out. It's getting pretty crazy looking here on the map. Different, uh, all sorts of different pressures and uh, potential out here, I would say. All right, I'm going to jump off here, folks. Have yourself a good night. Uh, seismograph stations here look uh, pretty calm. A couple of spikes here in Yellowstone. I'm not for sure if that's earthquake activity or not. It could be wind. It could be, I don't know what. Um, looks like it may be picking up some of this activity here. Little very small spikes. Uh, I don't know if that's earthquake activity or um, ice built up. I don't know. Is it even cold enough up there? Uh, for some ice. Let's see what we got for our current temperatures out here. Kind of curious. Yeah, it looks a little chilly up there. <laughs> Three degrees, and I'm sure a little bit colder here in this area. Uh, negative, yeah. So we're looking at uh, below zero conditions up there. So that could be some ice buildup. Definitely uh, is noticeable in the wintertime when we get that colder air coming in. 
Aside from that, uh, looks like we've got some rain coming in here to California tomorrow, so I'll, I'll be uh, waiting for that. Have yourself a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on on the uh, Wednesday morning update. Take care.